Are you living the Delaware Beach lifestyle? You can't live at the beach and do nothing. This up-and-coming year-round area has lots to offer. Find out where to eat, play, and serve. Living the ultimate dream. All right. Uh, welcome to the 302 Lifestyle Beach Podcast. We have John Bandish in the house. And John, I just love your last name. It sounds like you're like a Lone Star Bandit or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Very cool. <laughs> And John, I came across uh, some of your artwork and we had to have you on the show. Um, John is just amazing with what he does, but um, he also has a lot of his stuff uh, for sale. And there's just, you'll see it around town and different various uh, places. And um, you started getting into school, right? And then um, you never imagined your artwork kind of being able to uh, support anything. And tell us a little bit about how did you, uh, what, what do you do, first of all, and uh, how did you uh, end up uh, doing this uh, full time, your artwork? Got it. Well, first off, thanks for letting me be on the podcast. This is awesome. Uh, I love listening to you guys uh, since we moved down here. It's been uh, it's a great, for me, at least a great resource to kind of see, listen to everybody else as far as where they like to go and hang out. So uh, for me, simple enough. Um, I've been drawing and painting uh, and playing music also for as far back as I can remember. Uh, my mom loves to tell a story about me with a uh, in kindergarten with a apple and a red crayon. And I, you know, from there, it just went off. Um, wait, 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 wait. Apple and red crayon. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she just like, I guess I colored this, uh, this apple with the red crayon so good. Uh, and, uh, I was using green, uh, as a, as part of the shadow cast, um, which in the art world, you know, black isn't there, there is no true black shadow per se. It's always a complementary color that you'll see in the shadow cast, depending on the type of light source that is. But, um, so the art, uh, the teacher was like, uh, I think this kid's got some talent. So he's doing something that most people don't know about. So, um, mm. I think, I think I won every superlative for most artistic growing up all the way through high school. So it's not really a surprise to the people I grew up with, but, um, and you moved here. Where, where did you say you came from? So uh, I was born in Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania and grew up outside of the city in a uh, suburb called, uh, Kachak, Plymouth meeting area. Uh, um, so for, for me, I, I went to school, uh, for art, um, uh, traveled all around the world with art. I went to Temple University, um, T for Temple U, um, my sister went to the, Temple, so <laughs> she'll be watching this. She'll, she'll get you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there we go. One of, the, one of the cells for Temple was they have campuses around the world, um, and it was important to my mom for me uh, and for me. I mean, I, I was 18 year old kid. What do I know? But it was important. To, and I recognized the value of being able to go and study abroad somewhere. And the great part with Temple is that it's a Temple campus. So you didn't have to apply um, to, for some kind of special program. Um, and it wasn't any cost difference. If you went to Temple main campus in Philly or if you went to Temple Rome or Temple Edinburgh, okay. wherever you went, so that was a great selling point. Um, and I got a chance to go all over and see things that are just, it's amazing stuff. So, um, but that being said, um, I was serious about my art, but like many artists, uh, you don't really know how to do a business with it or think of it in that way. Um, so I graduated school and I had worked off and on in uh, construction and building maintenance and retail. Um, and then I guess it was about four years ago now, I hurt my back. Um, I guess doing physical work just wasn't for me for the rest of my life. So uh, I quickly realized, well, I can't do this forever. Uh, there's a reason why you don't see 40, 50 year old guys doing the construction job. So I got to find a way out of this. Uh, and there was my art. I'd always kind of made time for it. Um, and it took me a little while to, to think about uh, the... Uh, I don't want to say quality of my life because that sounds like I didn't have a happy life, but I, I started thinking that I was always looking at the clock that other at a job. Like I wanted to be somewhere else. And it took a while to realize that I wanted my art to be the main sort of focal point of my life outside of, you know, family and friends and wife and all that kind of stuff. But um, so it, uh, we started very sort of dangling that foot in the water, just test the waters out and, 
we it took off uh we've been uh doing um there's a traveling shows that uh, that happen all throughout the summertime all throughout the country uh so there's there's avenues to getting your art out there and and um i i've always been a beach bum uh that's why i moved to the beach uh so this seemed like a really great uh, opportunity for us to uh, get out of the city area and come down here and it's been great ever since now, Don, you unpacked a lot of good nuggets in there. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so, what I'm hearing is, so at an early age, and this is great for parents or kids listening or something that, you know, your kid or you had just some, you know, something going on that you just have a special interest in, right? So you're, you had a, <laughs> you know, a crayon and a picture, and what I'm hearing is that you just had something unique about how you were looking at something that most people don't see. So uh, the people around you saw that and you started focusing on uh, what you liked. But then as you got a little older, you couldn't see how you could make money because you're probably listening to other people tell you, well, that's not a real job. You need to do this or that. Uh, so you started doing something you didn't like, which is like 90% of people, I feel like. Uh, you started <laughs> noticing that you you had a decent life but you know you're just not doing what you love doing and so that awareness of your life kind of led into what would it look like if i did do this or you know you is that am i putting words in your mouth or is that pretty much it? that's pretty much it i was the proverbial standing on the edge of the cliff and ready to jump and i don't know yeah. how we're gonna land but we're gonna figure it out type of thing it's um very much akin to, I guess, this was part of my hero's journey uh, a little bit. Um, how yeah, long ago was that? That's pretty much you, it. First, you first had that, you know, awareness. Well, how long ago was that? Um, well, let me think. I, uh, I, I'm going to go back, I guess, about four years. Um, well, you said, yeah, you did say four years. That's right. Yeah, about four years ago, I went and... Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, there always seems to be this element to to us as human beings that um, so many of us, not all of us, of course, but so many of us uh, need some kind of instigation, a bit of a push, if you will, to go in the direction that we want to go in. Because it's scary, right? I'll, I'll be honest. It was it was scary to go. I want to be a full time artist, and it's like, well, then how, <laughs> right? <laughs> because there's this conception that artists don't make money, but the there's Yes, there, you know, there's there's reasons why we have uh, those types of things, a, a conception that artists don't make money. But I can tell you that that is not the case for so many artists that I've met. Um, uh, so it, it it was inspiring. It was scary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it was definitely inspiring to see that. And one of the great parts of the arts community, and I'm kind of with a broad brushstroke, there's a little analogy, painting uh, artists in general, um, because there's so many different types of art out there. Um, but in general, I, I have never met an artist um, who hasn't been willing to impart some uh, experience-based knowledge. Like, hey, I tried doing this. It didn't work. Why don't you try this? Like, I see you, what you're doing. And hey, maybe you might want to think about this. Or, hey, did you hear about this resource on this website or this person or this organization? And, and that is... I can't tell you how how uh, how great of a feeling it is to know that you're a part of a community of people that want to help you succeed. I, I want people to buy art. No, I'm selfish and I want you to buy my art, but um, I'm just as happy to promote other people's art uh, that I think is amazing. And that's just a great thing to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, it, just talking to you and I've recently kind of discovered this world of like, you know what, maybe I can do stuff I really like to do or even just looking at the situations I'm in differently, you know? And so literally uh, it looks like I'm in like some scary movie or something right now with my background, but I'm, in a, I'm actually uh, really blessed to be in a, a mastermind group where, so we have a cleaning business way off topic here, but it relates to um, if you're into something, it could be a hobby, a profession, a money-making thing, or just something you're into in life. Uh, what I learned was like, if you reach out, so the nice thing about today's world is you have Facebook and Google. So just searching people that have an interest in whatever category you're looking at, um, 
there's groups out there that love what you're doing. And if you connect with those groups, um, I mean, it just goes to show like people in power have a cabinet of people around them that, you know, give advice or different perspectives. Right. And I think that's what you're mentioning is that having people around me or in my network that are into what I'm into saves me countless hours and money because they're able to take their experiences and we kind of collaborate to save me time or money um, with each other and give diff each other different perspectives on situations we're in. Uh, so that's what you're doing with your artists. Now, is that, did you dive right into that right away? Or you said you had like a push or an aha moment. Um, it, was that seeing other people making money doing that? Yeah, it was. Um, so there's part of some of these uh, these summer art festivals, and, and that's kind of one thing that I'm a part of doing, and I love doing it. I love getting out there and, and, and just meeting other people, meeting people that are interested in the arts. Um, but there, there are ways for, uh, because it can actually, I don't want to say it's expensive, but you know, there's, there's travel fees, there's hotel fees, depending where you're going. Like, there's a lot that kind of goes into that, that uh, as a way to get started, uh, they have a lot of what they'll call emerging artists, uh, either discounts or you can get into the emerging artist area of the show and it's at a, it's at a different rate or something like that. And we did one back in Philly and in, in, uh, the Many Young Arts Festival, which is going to happen next weekend. So I'm driving back up for that. Um, and we, uh, I, I, we just went into it, just happy to be a part of it. Not real expectations. Uh, didn't know what to expect. So just didn't go in with anything. And uh, I, I think we, we walked home. My wife and I came home with, when, yeah, I think it was like two or three paintings. That was it. Everything else that we brought with us sold. So wow. it, it very quickly became this idea of, well, any, any thought that we're not going <laughs> to, and, and not that it's about, I, I, I don't want people to list that are listening to this to go, this guy's all, all he cares about is selling. Um, you know, there's a reality that, you know, you, you have bills to pay, right? You, you, you want to eat. Um, but at the same time, it was, it was uh, maybe more inspiring to want to go home because there are all these people that now own original art in their houses. Um, and that's just, a, that's awesome. Uh, it's because it shouldn't be today's world. It, it's a, it's almost mystifying, you know, uh, who's good, who, what's, what's not good. Uh, it doesn't, um, I guess, help when people see stories of a banana peel on a wall down in a, I think it was the uh, biennial down in Miami that sold for like $300 million. And it was a, bit, a banana peel on the wall. And people look at that and go, <laughs> you know, what is that? So it doesn't help that there's a lot of conceptual based things out there that are much more, it just takes a little bit more time and, and, and art education to, to know what they're doing, whether you like it or not, that's something else. But uh, for, for other artists that are based like myself that are based very much on skill of hand and, and the visual that's in front of you. Um, there, there's a, a lot of people, uh, dare I say, I, I like to think at least that the majority of people want to, they love to. Hmm. Yeah. You know, what? it's funny you mentioned that because I think there's this thing inside of people that's, you know, where we pick it up from, but somewhere along the lines, we pick up this thing that like, you can't enjoy what you're doing. Like <laughs> if you're going to get paid to do it, you can't like, be helping others or like actually enjoy it you know so when you come across somebody like an artist or you know we we're uh, in a helicopter in hawaii with someone and he's like welcome to my office you know and you kind of like have this thing inside of you that says oh you jerk how dare you enjoy what you, <laughs> you know what you're doing <laughs> and i think i think that's where like these i think just the general population thinks that you know you shouldn't like your job like you know and so when you make that shift of, well, maybe I can, or what would it look like? Or, and you find other people that are doing it. It's kind of like the four minute mile, you know, when that got broke, all of a sudden everyone's doing it, you know? And I think there is this big shift uh, going on right now where, you know, people are exploring, maybe I don't have to go to college or maybe, you know, there's just like, there's like a disruption in what's normal, I think. Um, so oh, absolutely. And rightfully so. Um how many people use phrases like, um, you know, we all die young or, um, you know, I, I don't want to have regrets or no regrets. You know, I think there are people wearing those t-shirts before I remember that. And uh, it's, I, I don't think it's, um, it's as, 
it's as scary anymore. And maybe that is because of things like technology, like the internet, where you can see other people doing things. And it's like, well, if they can do it, you know, kind of like, why can't I? If anything, after the, in this post pandemic timeframe that we're in, I, I'm not surprised at all that there aren't people who are saying, you know what, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. So I want to live for today, plan for tomorrow. Yes, but live for, live for today. And I want to do what I want to do. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that so many people that, that uh, it took this pandemic for people to think that way. Um, and I don't mean to make a certain light of people that have had a horrible time with the pandemic. Of course, it's been terrible for people, but it is at least a positive aspect, uh, in my opinion, that coming out of it, more people are saying, you know what, why can't I move to the beach? You know, why, why not? Why can't I figure that out? It's, you know... Maybe I can't have that beach house and beachfront property down in Bethany. I would love that too. But <laughs> I wouldn't mind waking up every morning and have my cup of coffee watching the sunrise. But you know what? I can move down here. We're in Dagsboro. We have a great home. We're in a great community. We're a few miles away. I go to the beach almost every day. Um, hey, <laughs> life is good. <laughs> yeah. And, we, and it kind of like builds this momentum. Like, um, you know, you have this perception that you can't do something and then you hear someone else say, I can do it, which is like you said, you have people around you that, you know, have done what you're, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish or do or be a part of. Um, once you have that in your head and you accomplish it, now it kind of gives you motivation to say, well, what else can I do? Or maybe I can make money or you sold your first painting, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, like there's actually opportunity here. Um, so it's very awesome. So same thing with living in. So I live in Dagsboro, you know, 10 minutes from the beach. But if I wanted to live right on the beach, it would just, I would just change the questions I'm asking myself. So it would be, okay, well, what would I have to do in order to live next to the beach? You know, and I just love that you've made that plunge and you're doing it. It's been, you know, several years later. Um, very awesome. So, John, what is, if you had to say, you know, uh, one thing that kind of, uh, uh, just one thing that kind of threw you off guard when uh, becoming an artist that, you know, did that for, you know, their work. Uh, what was one thing that um, uh, just, um, I'm looking for a word. Uh, hold on. I got it here. One uh, misconception. There it is. <laughs> one misconception about uh, being an artist that uh, people wouldn't think. Um. There's a misconception. Um, I think it's very great. I'm a part of uh, uh, this community from a gallerist back up in Philly, the Art MBA program. Um, and we talk about it fairly often uh, in, the, in this program and group of artists. The biggest misconception, I think, that artists themselves then have thinking about going and making that transition to, I'm going to do this as my living, got to figure it out. And then other people, and just in general, just other people, is that um, artists, all they do is sit in their studio and work and that's it. People come to them and they sell their art. Um, I probably spend at best 40% of my time actually painting and drawing uh, and, and doing that. The rest of it is spent marketing, uh, which I think I've learned maybe like the tiniest little bit uh, through trial and error, uh, being on their website and, and, and just the forget even social media, which that in and of itself is a whole other tool that seems very easy to use because it's, you know, the Instagram, oh, you just posted put a couple of hashtags and boom, there you go. It's like, nope. <laughs> you yeah. think that it's very, very easy uh, or that uh, most of the work is done on the, on the easel, so to speak. And I'd say that at best half, and that's being generous. Um, most of my time is spent not, not doing that, which I would love to do it. Um, and that's uh you know, at some point, uh, we'll get to that point. Um, but it's, it's not easy. Uh, if what I love the line in the, in, uh, I think it was a league of their own, right? If, uh, if it was easy, everybody would do it. The hard is what makes it great. And it's true. It really is honest to God. True. I, I can think back to myself four years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, tw uh 20 years ago, I graduated high school this year. So thinking about the 18 year old me that was going into college thinking, this is easy. <laughs> it's like, well, what I love to go back and tell myself a couple of things, right? Um, 
that's that's probably the biggest misconception is that most of my time is spent painting and drawing and it's just not i wish it was but it's not well, john you just led right into the next question so <laughs> you can go back 10 years ago and talk to your younger self what are two things that you would have told yourself <laughs> 10 years ago, let's see, it's, it's 2021, so it would be 2011. So I couldn't tell myself that the Phillies were going to win the World Series because they already had. Um, <laughs> or even like a child self, like if you could go back in time and give yourself. Um, well, I, I would definitely tell myself to, uh, to, for one, to enjoy the time, uh, just to stop and enjoy the time that you have more. Try to somehow slow down. Um, I... I wanted to move to, to lower Delaware. I wanted to, well, <laughs> I should say this, this is really funny. Um, and bear with me. I'm going to get to this in a second. My, uh, I wanted to move to South Carolina. My wife wanted to move to North Carolina. So we compromised on Delaware. <laughs> um, uh, Hello, we got married in Lewis two years ago. So it, it's not like it's, it was, we've never been here. Um, but I wanted to move here because the pace of life is slower. Uh, and I, I, I really feel very strongly about that. It's not that I don't think that it's for everybody. I have family that live in New York City, family that live in Philly, and they love the hustle, bustle, and fast pace, and it works for them, and great. For me, it was life just happens so fast on itself. I don't want to speed it up any, in any way. Um, well, I, like that. Uh, I would tell myself to go back and enjoy try to just enjoy the moments and slow down and really take it in because a lot of what I'm coming from with my desires to paint um, come from these childhood memories. Uh, so much of all of us, whether it doesn't matter if you have a, a podcast or if you're, if you're a painter, uh, you know, we're all affected by how we grew up, where we grew up, whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. We're affected by it. Um, and I started to think and realize probably about the time that I came back from, from living abroad was I, I just wanted something different out of life than what I had all than what I was on the path towards. That's kind of where it all sort of started, if you will, whether I knew it or not at the time, it's, that's true. So, and the other part of me would be probably to, if you're going to go to college uh, and you want to go to school for art, you are going to take at least a couple of business courses, get, get a major and do something, do anything that help you, learn marketing, not on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, same boat here. So <laughs> I love that. So, okay. So a lot of people in the, the going back to the misconceptions is that everything's easy and you just have some really good paintings and you post them out there and everyone just wants to spend money and you just sit around painting all day. God, that would be such a perfect world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you just pay money and just everything works itself out. Um, but you know, there's a lot of hard work that goes in behind that. You know, if you see someone out there at the artist, um, you know, uh, shoot, what do they call them? Uh, the artist festivals or whatever it may be that you're involved with and someone's sitting there, they got all these paintings out. You're only seeing the, the thin layer at the top. You know, there's a whole, uh, whole business behind that, you know, and managing your life and everything else. Um, and, so and, not, and then even to kind of further that, uh, for people listening, uh, especially for anybody younger that's that wants to pursue this, and I'm all about it. I, I want you to contact me. I'll give you uh, all the best advice I can. Um, there's there's a, a, a story that uh, I, it was drilled into my head in undergrad. Um, Leonardo da Vinci started apprenticing in a professional artist studio from the age of eight until he was 18, six days a week, 14 hours a day. Wow. You'll get pretty darn good at just about anything if you did that amount of time with something. But the part, the point of it is, is that practice makes perfect. You know, uh, we, I, I think about practice and all you think of from Philly, you think about Allen Iverson, right? We're talking about practice, but it's, it's just the truth. And there's so much that goes into the subtleties of you can start talking about color mixing and what you can learn. And then you're getting into all these specifics. But right now I have about 600 paintings that I'm working on in my studio. Now, a lot of them are small, but it doesn't matter. There's still 600 of them that are, that are in here. Wow. So, okay. So skipping over the, uh, <laughs> the other part that you mentioned, I'm diving right into the 600. So you have 600 projects going on right now. 
That's correct. Do you organize them or do you literally just get an idea and you start it and then when you're kind of done with that, you just kind of move on? It's just kind of like a rolling project. How does that work? Well, so I, I work in a, in a, I'm going to try to keep this as concise as I can. So I apologize if I don't. Um, I work in a, in something that's a, um, I'm rooted in, in more traditional methods, approaches, ideas of art and painting than, uh, than most people. What you don't necessarily learn about in just your, you know, what high school art class is that, um, Artists in the past would do preparatory drawings and little sketches, things that today we would consider finished pieces, but back then they did not. Mm -hmm. So for uh, like a large, big historical painting that you're seeing in a museum or something like that, uh, traditionally, you know, there may be something like 15 to 20 different drawings that were done. They pose the model in different ways. Um, there's different value sketches where they're trying to work out where do we want the light to come from? How do we want this to look? So you may end up having anywhere from 30 to 40 different, whether they're a drawing, a painting sketch, something that goes into building that last finished piece. Um, we j today, we consider those finished pieces, again, before they did not. A lot of those, they just don't survive. Um, actually, and I don't remember the Italian word for it, but the word cartoon comes from those drawings, which is why today cartoons are usually considered some kind of Disney or, you know, some fun kind of thing like that. Um, so for a lot of things, like for what I've got, like working on behind me, I know people listening to the podcast can't see it, but I'm working on a, on an 18 by 24. So a little larger, kind of a mid-sized painting. Um, but what I'll do with these is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces that are scaled down there. I'm working out different variations of, of color relationships to one another to kind of say, well, what do I like the best? What do I think works the best? What am I trying to do? What's the point of this? Does this work? Does that not work? Why doesn't that work? Or maybe tr let me just try this so that I'm not working out. I, I, okay, so going back to the misconceptions, uh, I guess people think that it's just this straight, intuitive, you know, stream of conscious, very sort of Bob Ross, let's paint a happy little tree or happy little wave yeah. or something. Um, and it's, it's not. Um, so it sounds like a lot, but if I've got an idea for, say, um, you know, I'm doing a, a beach painting, right? And, and it's funny because I was working on one that we just had in a show and I'm getting photographed. And I said to my wife, you know, I think this is missing something, you know, what do you think if I, if I go and add this in and I'd already, I was on a very late stage of this painting and she stopped and said, what do you always say? Go do another one. It's yeah. like, Oh God, I got to go do another one now. Like, <laughs> but, but it's the truth is that you have these different variations of something and then you sort of figure out whether it's just your own intuition or asking people, you're kind of giving yourself a critique or if you're lucky enough to have other people in your circles that come over and say, you know, what do you think? What's, what, do, what do you, here's the point. Does this translate to as what I'm trying to get at? Which one is the best at, at this? Which one is the most successful? What can I learn from this? Even if it's just something as simple as understanding, like, you know, for me, I love painting waves, the curl of a wave. Like, how does that actually happen? What's the difference of, uh, of a wave in Hawaii? With, um, it, because the water is very different there. It sounds like a funny thing, but You've been to Hawaii. I've been to Hawaii. I can tell you that it's very different uh, than, say, you know, Bethany Beach. Um, what's the difference? How does it work? How do these things interact? And then all the different subtleties that then go into that. So bringing it back in, those 600, it, it's actually kind of scaled down to probably about 50 to 60 different pieces. They're just different variations or versions of something. That's really interesting, John. So uh, I... I Got, I dove pretty deep into drawing and uh, sketching and stuff like that when I was younger. Um, awesome. But I'd love to see some of your stuff, man. Well, I quit because um, of that process. I didn't realize what was needed to accomplish something, but I would actually get frustrated with that stage that you're talking about of uh, testing, figuring out, doing stick figures to kind of see where things go and all that. I had it in my head up until this very moment that the correct process for an, an artist is to kind of do an outline, but then that's it. Now you got to finish it all the way out to the end. 
But if I would have realized or someone, an artist would have told me, look, man, you're going to have, you know, several of these. Just keep going until you get it right. I used to be a perfectionist thinking that this one canvas that I have, I can't get another one. I can't start over. <laughs> this has to be it. And it was so long of a tedious thing. But uh, what I'm hearing you say is like, look, that's part of it. Like, so every painting I'm seeing in anywhere, every artist is going to have their own process. Yep. But basically that painting or that drawing or whatever it is, is, uh, is a story basically. And so like what you're looking at, it's just like the business owner, you're looking at the paintings out there, but behind the scenes, you know, you could have, you know, 20 canvases that all had different options and stuff. Um, very cool. And it kind of, oh, yeah. and a lot of them never see the light of day or I'll find something. We moved here back in December. So when I was packing up the studio, I'd find something and go, that's where this ended up at. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be a cool uh, addition on the, like a website would be like, you know, the myth fits, uh, the myth fits uh, <laughs> right. paintings or something that never made it. Um, very cool. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the 302 area with artists. I mean, Rehoboth alone is just a huge artist network area. Okay. Um, share us a little bit about, uh, you said there's something going on in Philly coming up soon, um, especially around our area. What, what type of uh, stuff can people check out during the year, or especially soon? Yeah, so I'm just getting involved with the Dewey Artist Collaboration, and they have, I think it's in West Rehoboth, um, on uh, Monday nights, uh, they do a little uh, kind of like farmer's market art festival um, that they've got going on. It's awesome. I love no, that's down in Wilmington Avenue, right? Uh, yes. Right yes. by uh, the Ale House right there. Is that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm excited to, uh, I've just been talking with them a little bit. Actually, the, uh, person the point person that i was talking with she's from the philly area so we were just laughing like here we are i see your phone number says 484 and i'm like oh you're from philly <laughs> what's going on down here so Very cool. um yeah so uh the, speaking of philly we'll be up there uh i'm not sure when this podcast will be on but this coming weekend which is i think the 26th is saturday i forget what day it is but we'll be up there for that um for me uh also down here july 3rd uh, Saturday in Lewis, there's the St. Peter's Art Festival in downtown Lewis. I'll be a part of that this year. There's a, there's a lot that's going on um, in the arts community in general. I'm just going to talk kind of in the, in the general uh, Lewis, Rehoboth, Dagsboro, Millsboro, um, Ocean City areas. There's art organizations up and down that I'm just starting to reach out to and getting up being a part of. Um, I'm actually going to be teaching an art class at the Millsboro Art League starting on Thursday nights in a couple of weeks. So, wait, wait, wait. so Thursday nights, you're going to be teaching art classes? Yeah, we're going to teach a, an introduction to oil painting classes at the Millsboro Art League. Uh, so you okay. can go on to their website and check them out. Um, there's a lot. There's, there's, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to move here. Um, so when my wife and I were talking about wanting to move, uh, one of the things that was important to me was there being other artists uh, or some type of, of art. There's not that there's not any in other places, but there's, you know, not every locale is the same. Um, and being down here and seeing what was going on in Lewis and Rehoboth and, and Bethany, I've been a part of the Bethany, um, uh, the Bethany art festival that's going to happen in September. We'll be down there again this year. Yeah, it's right uh, so down, uh, the boardwalk area. It's all taken over by our whole family. whole thing. Yeah. And and this past year, uh, you know, like so many of them, they, they weren't able to do it just because of COVID. So uh, we're hoping a lot of people come out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to help promote that too. So you got Bethany, Rehoboth uh, does their thing down at Wilmington Avenue. And I think they even, do, they do end up doing something uh, down more in the boardwalk, right? I think the, Rehoboth. They do. Um, and uh, I, I think they're in collaboration with the Rehoboth um, Arts League, which I'm about to, which we're talking with them right now as well and joining up with them. Um, there's just a lot, man. There's a lot, all these different arts organizations. Uh, one of the things I'm going to start doing is posting on my website. So you can go to my website, um, 
and we'll start posting uh, some different events, uh, not just that I'm a part of, but just other things happening in the area. Um, well, John, this is a great plug-in. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, but guys, if you're yeah. trying to uh, check any of this stuff out, uh, get more of John and see some of his work, we're posting stuff up on the video if you're watching it right now. But um, go down below. Uh, you can click on johnbanishart.com. Uh, there's also a phone number there if you guys are trying to get a hold of John or you're interested in starting down a path of art. Uh, John can help you out. He's doing the class and uh, anything that you're trying to look at or just check out some of his paintings for purchase. Uh, definitely check out his site. So very cool. Um, Thank you. Okay, so we got some good stuff going on uh, uh, soon. But uh, more importantly, I'm sure if you just go to your site, you can check out some different things and uh, just search Facebook for art, uh, Rehoboth, Lewis, Dewey, Bethany, all the main beach areas down in the three to uh, support and have uh, local artists, uh, events and festivals and very cool. Okay, John, uh, let's dive in a little bit more in the 302. So um, as an artist and just coming here from a big city, which I love talking about because there's so many people moving from the cities to experience this lower, slower uh, <laughs> lifestyle, right? What's one of your yep. biggest takeaways from going from a city to the beach life? Oh, boy. Um, well, you know, when you're in the city... Uh, you're, you're, you can always walk to like a corner store or something like that to get a little snack or something like that. You can't always do that around here. But um, I, I think the biggest takeaway um, is how, God, I'm, uh, this uh, it's going to make it sound like people in the cities are just horrible. Just how friendly everybody is. Um, mm -hmm. The community that we live in, I mean, people will stop and say, Hey, how you doing? You know, and they, and they mean it. It's not just the, you uh, hold the door open for somebody at a Wawa and that's like, you know, that's the extent of somebody being nice to you for the day. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just, people just seem to be happier and nicer and more friendly. And then that's a great place to live. Who doesn't want to live there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, same thing here. Uh, we came from Vegas. So going into a little beach town, is a little scary at first, but once you get used to it, it just the vibe. Yeah. It's kind of like that Bob Marley vibe, you know, you just, uh, everyone's just kind of, in a better mood. I don't know if it's the ocean or what it is, but that's just the energy there. It's just, uh, yeah, a lot different. Uh, John, what are, what are some of your favorite spots to check out in the 302 area? Maybe. Oh, I got a couple of spots so far. Um, I should be wearing the hat. Uh, I love Thompson Island Brew Company. They are an awesome uh, beer company up in, uh, up in Rehoboth. Yep. Um, for anybody that likes to have a good craft beer, they are fantastic. Oh, that's um, a Sodell, Sodell company, I believe. Yeah, it is a Sodell company. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and I think, I think Sodell is behind uh, the people that are building a brew company close to you. Um, yeah, down yeah, right on Atlantic Avenue. Uh, yeah. Actually, the Ocean View Brewing Company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, that's exactly what they're called. Um, so I drive past there every day and thinking like, God, I can't wait to go hang out there now, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, we, um, where else? Harpoon Hannah's is a fantastic spot. They're down in Fenwick. We've had a ball going there in the past for New Year's. We've been, again, we, my wife and I have been coming here for a while. Her, her aunt actually moved here right when she and I first started dating. Oh, wow. So it, it was kind of, it's kind of a funny <laughs> joke now that we ended up moving here and we live around the corner from them. It wasn't planned. We were trying to, we oh, were just yeah. looking everywhere. It just sort of happened. So it's funny. We used to come down here for vacation and now we live down here. So, but Harpoon Hannah's is always, is always a fun time. I mean, like, I, I know it sounds crazy and cliche, but like, dude, I just love putting my toes in the sand and just any beach you can put me. I just, I love it. I, any, any of the beaches, they're all beautiful. They're all amazing. Uh, they're, you move to the beach for that reason, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's just something about it. I don't know. Um, it just has like a really good energy. I try to make it down to the beach at least five to ten minutes a day, even when it's not nice out, you know, and just kind of, you know, just stand there for a minute and just soak in that, uh, you know, earth, <laughs> God, or whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, all right, John, um, let's do lightning round. You ready? All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, what is your favorite book, tool, software, video, 
Netflix video, something that uh, stood out to you in your life that was kind of a pivot for you or just something somebody can check out today? Um, something to somebody to check out that changed my life. That's a good question. I don't remember seeing, uh, listening to anybody else get a question like this in the other podcast. Um, honestly, uh, ESPN did a great 30 for 30 on Eddie Ical. And I knew who he was before that, but I watched that and it just got me really hooked onto surfing, the surf, surf culture, beach culture, all of that. His story is inspiring it's a tragic story but it's a great story of who he was he's a great person um i really identified a lot with uh, a lot of the just the character who who eddie was so i uh, definitely check out the espn 30 for 30 on eddie Ical. all right 30 for 30 espn i'm sure you can check that out in not netflix so yeah, however you get a hold of ESPN, I'm sure you YouTube can. it or something. I don't know. YouTube it, yes. Uh, cool. Uh, John, what is one question I should have asked you, and what's your answer? Oh, God. <laughs> um, one question you should have asked, um, what's one thing that I miss about living in the big city? Ah, yes, flip it. Um, the one thing that I miss, um, I hate, I have to say it, right. I'm all about the healthy lifestyle at the beach, but I love a cheesesteak from Pudges. They are the best cheesesteak you're ever going to get. They gonna are say, if you don't say a cheesesteak, I don't know where you're from. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm from Pennsylvania. So I used to take a trip down to Philly just to get the good cheesesteak, you know, at least once a year. Oh yeah. Very cool. Uh, well, with that, do you have any uh, cheesesteak places around the area? We, I've got another buddy that's we're always like battling cheesesteaks. Uh, what's so your favorite? There's a, it's funny you say that, right? Because <laughs> uh, my wife saw the sign in Rehoboth, uh, and I don't remember the name of the place, but they advertise as the best cheesesteak down there. So I have to check that out. So I don't know about them yet, but I will say the Long Neck Deli over in long neck is uh, is run by a woman who's from delaware county delco so then she gets amoroso rolls that's kind of the secret to how you know it's a really good cheesesteak or not um and so far they are the best wow the long neck deli i haven't had anyone tell me that place so i think I've it tried is a hole in the wall. <laughs> it's a <laughs> hole in the wall type of spot and you know those are the best places yeah man all right i'll uh we'll have to check that out have you heard of float therapy? Holy cow, this is like the biggest secret in America. <laughs> I think the world. Famous people, athletes, all these people are doing float therapy. And it's called Urban Float in Rehoboth. You can go to urbanfloat.com, uh, click on Rehoboth, and check out these guys. You're basically sitting on 1,200 pounds of Epsom salt. Everything just feels so amazing. And you're on this weightless de-stressing um, pod for an hour. I love it. You get a discount uh, your first time. You can also uh, let them know that you're from 302 Lifestyle. Check them out, guys. Sponsored by Urban Float. Uh, with Art, uh, you're about to be on your, you know, your last bed. You got, you got a pen and paper. You have one last thing to leave with people that has to do with being an artist. What would you tell people? I don't know who quoted this, but it stuck with me all the way back from when I was just a kid in high school. I've seen it everywhere. It's one of those weird little things that has popped up. I'm a, I'm a big believer in just being one with the spirit, if you will. I know that's kind of not too off base for, for artists and creative people, but I do there's energies out there and connecting with that energy. I have literally seen this phrase pop up. You know, these are the days before the internet was what the internet before all of us had these kind of cell phones and stuff. I've seen this quote pop up and all around the world, literally all around the world. I've seen this quote. Um, the best thing that you can do is to make art that you care about and lots of it. Wow. And that's it pretty is, much a quote for life. I mean, it, it is. It's stuck <laughs> with me. I, I'm I'm getting almost 40 years old now. And I, I can think back to the 16 year old me that first saw that. 
I can't tell you who said it. I don't remember where I first saw it. I just know that I have literally seen that quote pop up like literally all around the world where everywhere I've been, I've, I've seen that quote pop up in some way. It's like a light shining down. <laughs> Follow this. All right. Say that quote one more time. The best thing that you can do is to make art that you care about and lots of it. The best thing that you can do is make art that you care about and lots of it. Love That's it. it man. And I'm going to see if I can find out who said that. <laughs> If you can find that out, let me know. I will be really appreciative. <laughs> 20 years worth of me trying to figure it out. <laughs> Very cool. All right. We'll see. Um, John, I am just so thankful that you joined us today. Um, it's very interesting diving into the artist world because especially if, if you're listening and you're moving into the 302 area, you're going to just see like an outpouring of uh, all kinds of cool um, art and just the beach life just attracts that uh, artist environment, I think. And um, it's really interesting to see the back end of stuff. So, you know, a lot of times we just come up, we see paintings. Oh, it's nice or not nice. Or why is this one $3 million or whatever? It's like <laughs> a banana. But uh, I, th I think it just goes down to, you know, people can really feel uh, the passion behind someone else's art. You know, and it could be something you're working on. It could be clay. It could be, you know, a mechanic or whatever it may be. But I think people can generally just feel the passion behind things and you know you have a connection with stuff you can't explain it and i think that's why artists are just so cool and powerful and you just tap into that creative intelligence you know that's out there um so having artists man it's probably one of the most important things in the world because uh, you're tapping into that uh, creative intelligence and it allows people to express themselves in all types of different ways and i think that's what freedom uh america and the world is about man and um that now, the only thing i'll add to that is i i just i hope it makes people think or feel uh one or the other if not maybe if i'm lucky enough it's both um again you know so thank you for <laughs> for plugging yeah. artists like that it's uh it's not the easiest of lives at least at first but it's definitely um for anybody listening that's that's in it then you know it for anybody that's listening that's thinking about getting into it it's 100% the most rewarding thing to do with your time, yeah. in my opinion. I love it. And I'm sure that's probably why you're branching out and starting to do some classes and stuff. And just yeah. share that with the world and let people know, hey, you can do this. You know, you can do anything. Absolutely. Cool. Oh, I'd love to, to post your links or uh, information on uh, joining you on your class for the oil painting. And uh, John... Thanks again for being on, man. Thank you very much for having me on. And uh, thanks for, uh, for including me as a part of these other great people that are down here in the 302. And we'll see you on the beach. All right, guys, you heard it. Keep leaving the 302 lifestyle. Check out all these amazing artists. More importantly, or not more important, but just <laughs> as important, but very important to check out John's work. Uh, at his site, we're going to post down below. And uh, keep supporting local artists and um yeah all right guys keep living the 32 lifestyle we'll see you next time wish you could spend more time having fun and less time with chores go to 302beachtalk.com to get 20 dollars off a home cleaning you'll be entered to win a completely free cleaning eat play serve sponsored by that guy with a broom